Yeah, people were very amused at that. Get rid of some of that energy. Hold on. I have bad lungs. Eleven forty, no time for Mario Kart. Uh, chin defense. I, I unsubscribe next month. Hey, no, you as, don't. As a member, I might need to reconsider. That's right. Chin defense. <laughs> Last night, um, I relapsed. So you know the video where I was like, tea time? I didn't take anything that day, um, but I relapsed like the day before. So it was probably still in my system. So I relapsed yesterday and uh, ended up doing way too much, like to the point where it was like all night and it was just like, I just, so this is like probably gonna be triggering to talk about because it talks about drug abuse. So I just wanted to let you know, I'm gonna be telling like what happened. And it's actually like helps me to tell you guys and like you're my VIBs, so I know there's not as much negativity talking to you guys, so it's it's gonna be okay. Um after the bouncy ball. No, that was a different day. The bouncy ball day, I didn't do anything. Like I had no weed, nothing. So the next day I think. Hi Brooke. Um hi Alma from Rosa. So what happened was I relapsed and oh hi Joe, where's Joe? Jaina, Vera. Um yeah, I'm just gonna tell them what happened once and then so hi basic basic i'm doing a lot better so i i did way too much i like i pretty much did like a total of like four grams um i bought like uh like two about uh, eight grams seven grams and i ended up like flushing the rest of it this morning with my uncle on the phone so what happened was <sighs> you never realize how lonely addiction is or like struggling is mentally until you reach out and ask for help from people around you so like something so simple, but something I never wanted to do. I never wanted to burden somebody with something like this, because this is heavy. Like, if you have somebody who's an addict in your life, it's a heavy thing to deal with. Um, you know what I mean? It's, like, really, really, really heavy to deal with. So, hi, Marissa. Pay attention. So, okay, um, yeah, but basically... Well, what happened was... just like oh my god like what am i doing like this is this is bad you know and i guess I'm, i feel lucky that I, I don't know i just felt like this is it like i have to yeah i'm like i have to do something i have to ask for help like i just really felt alone and i like i wanted help so i called um I tried getting a hold of my mom but i think she was still sleeping it was pretty early so everyone i tried to get a hold of was sleeping obviously so but bb called me back first and he's he's such an amazing person you guys like as a human being he's so caring and so amazing he's like you know, um, holding me accountable by like checking in with him and stuff like that. And I don't know. He's an amazing person because I did lie to him, you know, a few times. And you're like, oh, I'm not using, you know, which you don't want to tell people you're using because they're on your case about it and you just want to keep using, you know what I mean? But no, I don't want to. I don't want to. This is not my life. Like when I compare, it's like, okay, an eventual life of like homelessness, um, just complete. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want, like, a that kind of life. Addicted, homeless, um, no friends or family left to support you. I mean, I don't think my family would ever, like, not support me, but, well, I don't know, but, um, or 
Euro bees, like you guys, my friends, my family, and like my friends, you know who you are, who I've been talking to, my family are just like the reason that or six feet under. Yeah, that's what my uncle said. He said, um, with addiction, especially drugs, like harder drugs, it's like you get clean or you die, pretty much. <laughs> so um so I said, like, obviously I prefer to be at home, but thinking of being at home, yeah, it would be a trigger right now, probably. Yes, yeah, Sarah, I'm very, very fortunate to have good friends and family. Um, so having the support, I think, is what's going to make this different. And so what I did was, he said, I said, I still, I admitted to him, I said, I still have a gram. He said, right now, while I'm on the phone, um, not a gram, an eight ball. <laughs> so, um, I flushed an entire thing down the toilet. So, um, with him on the phone, uh. And then, and then, uh, I know, so expensive, they work, <laughs> but that's the thing, like, I'm, I make pretty decent money to support myself, but not to support a cocaine addict, no, <laughs> you know, so, what happened was, um, I started getting, like, really bad chest pain, like, and I have pulmonary embolism, so, people blaming me for being a burden on the healthcare system, blame my doctor, because I was told that anytime I have chest pain, they told me to go, okay, so, <laughs> gotta add a bitchiness in there, so anyway, um, I'm not gonna be a liar, I know, um, <laughs> so anyway, and I went and talked to Pete about it, um, yeah, he's gonna take care of the cats for a couple days, I don't know how long I'll be here, but, <sighs> anyway, I, went, I ended up needing to go to the ER, because I was feeling like, I was scared, like, I've, I'm not a person who, I mean, I haven't used any kind of drugs years and years and years, and it was more of a party thing, so I'm not like a habitual, like, you know what I mean? So for me, that's a lot of stuff, and I was panicking, I'm like, you know, I was like, BBW420, this was not cut, like, it was, like, pure, like, it was, like, pure, it, like, you, your whole face is numb, and that's why it's so addictive, like, the stuff I used to do at parties was crap, you know, this was, like, I've never had that, like, um, chest pain is an emergency matter for anyone, exactly, people are so stupid, it's disgusting, well, it's true, like, why are you going to the ER for addiction, uh, because drugs have a negative effect on your whole fucking body, and I want to make sure I'm not dying, <laughs> No, it, I mean, it is cut, but it's more pure than stuff I've had. Like, really pure. Um, like, a lot more pure. It's really expensive. It's, like, double the price, and addiction is an emergency when you're ready. Yeah, if you need help, you just go, and, like, it's a medical issue. Hi, Dax. Yeah, Bobby Joe, you got this. It's hard. It's really hard. Um, it's not, like, 100% pure. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, that's not the point. It was a lot more potent than stuff I'm used to, so it didn't take much to become addicted to it, you know? Um, yeah, Dax. So I just thought, no, this is not the life for me. Like, I, my life is, like, I'm ruining my life, you know, potentially. So what I did was went there. Um, the nurse was so funny. The nurse was, like, giving me, like, a pep talk, you know, like, get your life together and blah, blah, blah. And um, so they sent me right back to, like, to be hooked up to monitors and stuff. And they did an EKG or ECG or whatever it's called. I gotta get that off my leg. Um, my, my eyes are really big right now. That's weird. It's probably still going to be in my system for a while. I did a lot. And you know what? It wasn't so bad, like, being at the hospital and, and having all the support. Hi, Mega Peter. That I last used last night, like yesterday. And I haven't slept yet. But what I am doing is I called right away also, right after I called my family and said, I've used, I've messaged everyone important to me. I said, I've used, I need your help. I need to go to the hospital right away, for, right there for me. And that make, that motivates me to be there more for people too. You know what I mean? Um, I wish I, I really, really carry a lot of guilt. I wish I was there more for Mike because like I talk to him every day, you know, he's somebody who didn't survive his addiction. So, um, Pete's is supportive, but he doesn't really have much to, he doesn't really understand addiction as much, you know? Thanks guys. I appreciate you being here. No, it does help. Like, you know, cause you guys are a support system too. You're not nobodies. You're my VIBs. You're my community. Of supporters and, and honestly that's that's what i just need right now like you know but the thing is like i'm not craving it right now like i'm not craving it. It's okay but smoking weed helps like <laughs> you know it's like relaxing here and i have titan titan is such a, like he's such a good company he's so cute um uh okay real quick well i just won't answer the questions i don't want to answer um but uh I know. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Cannabis got me through recovery. Yeah, it, it is, for real. 
This is half of the turning point. Half of. So I, uh, so I meant to say at the grocery store is, I feel so scattered. I don't feel right in my head right now. Probably because I didn't sleep. But what else? So I called, right after I called my family to pick me up, I called this um, addiction center for women. And the lady answered right away. And she was so nice. Like, they're so nice to you. Like, these people were so nice. I think I need the weed right now, Sunshine. It actually, like, takes the jitters away. Um, I'm not treating you guys like therapists. I'm just telling you, my, sharing my story with you. I'm not asking you to, you know... Uh, I'm not asking you to give me life advice and stuff like that. I'm just asking you to listen and just be here and listen. That's all. But yes, I need to talk to a therapist too. Like, so I, they told me that in order to get it funded by the government, I have to go through this place that's like, like a hospital. It's out of the hospital and it's like the SAR or some kind of addiction recovery assessment. So like recovery assessment. So like what they do is they call you, like tomorrow I have an appointment at two and they do an assessment. It's like a half an hour long. So, um, they're going to assess my my addiction, my problem, and I'm going to be totally honest with them, obviously, because I need then I can get the appropriate help I need. They're going to determine, or it might have been like, should I say a half hour? I think it's like an hour and a half call, but it's like two phases or something. Anyway, they're going to determine what type of level, like what kind of need help I need. Um, but inpatient, there's a big wait list. And like, there's like what? Like, <laughs> so I don't know what they're going to do with me, but like, she kept saying, like, are you on any other drugs? Are you on any opioids? Are you on any heroin? And I was like, no. Are you on fent like anything like that fentanyl? Or I was like, no, just coke. Like, I'm just doing not just coke. Like, it's a big deal. But she said, she said that the withdrawal from coke is not dangerous, like opiates. So I don't know if I'll need like a medical. I don't think I'll need a medical detox because like I'm not the. I have like symptoms, but they're not like life threatening. You know, like opioid withdrawal can kill you, and alcohol withdrawal can kill you. So, um. So what turned into a couple lines when I was in the party mood ended up being a full-blown addiction in like just a couple months. Um, of course, never would admit that to myself. You know, I'm going to follow what they tell me. April Mojo, are you actually going to follow through this time? Put your health first up. <sighs> Excuse me? Milk in my members for attention? How about you go... Like, really? Like, how about you shut up and be hidden on my channel? <sighs> Like, it blows my fucking mind that people actually think I I create problems in my life for attention. Like, people are, like, sick. Anyway. um, Yeah, that's why Angie, I went to the hospital. You know? Because I wanted to make sure that I wanted to get, like, a clean bill of health. But now I have to get, like, all this STD testing and stuff. Like, I still have to get all that done with my doctor. So, um, But I got the ball rolling. And I'm very well supported. And that definitely makes a difference. I mean, like, but my, my family's not stupid. They're like, cause already I was like, I kind of wanted to go home tomorrow. I'm like, you're not going home tomorrow. <laughs> so I need a couple days to just really get out of my system. I think it takes like a day, but that's a lot on your body. Yeah, it is. Milking my members. Like, give me a break. But that's what happens when you listen to these stupid friggin' reaction channels. Ugh. Like some of them are just friggin' stupid. <sighs> Do you feel more serious this time than last time? Yeah, I do. I feel very serious. Because, like I said, what's the alternative? Ruining my life and dying? No, I don't want that. <laughs> you know, I was doing so good, like, going on my walks. And I don't care, like, how I lost the weight. I'm glad it's off. And I'm going to just move on and keep it off from now on. You know, I'm not going to, like, beat myself up and be like, um, people think it was just cocaine. It wasn't. It's not just cocaine. Uh, I'm blocking sunshine. Goodbye, you're annoying. I'm allowed, to I'm allowed to comment on anything I want. You don't like it? Bye. Recovery stories can be helpful for others. Exactly. And like, why am I going to pretend like, like, what do you want me to do? Light a fucking candle, put string lights and do like makeup videos or like, I, not just makeup videos, but like just talk about like, I don't know, like, what am I supposed to, like, why can't I share my story? Like, why can't I share what I'm going through? Like, why should I be ashamed of it? You know, a lot of people go through shit. <laughs> Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Bye. See ya. You won't be missed.